morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Today is, well, I know, it's New Year's Eve, but, <laughs> but it actually is Christmas one. It's considered part of the Christmas season. So of course, last Sunday was uh, Christmas Eve, but today is really Christmas one. So um, it's, it's New Year's Eve, and tomorrow, of course, is New Year's, but uh, we're, we're continuing the season for today, for Christmas. And then next Sunday, we begin the season of Epiphany. Um, Saturday actually is the, the day, the festival of Epiphany, but we thought we would move it to Sunday. So we're going to celebrate Epiphany on Sunday and then continue with the season after Epiphany beginning next week. So Merry Christmas. Let us begin our service. Please rise for the opening hymn. It is a beautiful hymn from the traditions of um, the Episcopalian and the Lutheran Church. How bright appears the morning star. Now this is a little unfamiliar. It's very easy to learn. So Leah's gonna play it through once and then we will begin. Oh, so the man 
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to God, God forever and ever. And ever. <laughs> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Gloria will be the chorus of angels we have heard on high. Oh. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive the Christ as our redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. But before we sit down for the lessons, I'd like us to read together the collect in your bulletin. It is the contemporary version. It would be right at the front of the bulletin, the second prayer. Let's read this together. Let us pray. Almighty God, you, you have poured, poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. Today's first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61 and 62. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us say Psalm 147 together. Alleluia. How, How good it is to sing praises to our God. God. How, How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. 
make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind, and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapters 3 and 4. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the singing of the gradual hymn. It is number 82 of the Father's Love Begotten. And this hymn text was written in the year about 400. The tune was written in the 1100s. So we have a long tradition of this beautiful message. We'll have Leah play it through once and then we'll join in the verses.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of a, as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, today is New Year's Eve, the first Sunday after Christmas. And many of us are still enjoying our Christmas trees. We just plugged ours in before we left. And it'll be lit when we come home. The lights and the decorations still look pretty. Even the boughs of the if even the boughs of those live trees like ours are like drooping. They're all drooping. And the artificial trees are getting dusty. They still look pretty. So I wonder if this morning we might take some of that creativity that we see in those trees and think creatively this morning and imagine one more gift left under our tree. This gift is not glamorous or blingy, not blingy. It's not something to eat. It's not wrapped in beautiful paper or contained in one of those holiday festive bags. This last gift that we find under our Christmas tree is a theological gift. <laughs> it's the gospel passage Deacon Terry read to us today. And we open this gift and we read it on the first Sunday after Christmas because it's a very different story about Jesus. It's a totally different one 
than the one about the baby Jesus in a manger. This passage from the gospel, according to John, is complicated. And it's rather hard to understand. But today on this New Year's Eve, this is a gift, a gift to us, a gift of an invitation to explore the ideas of our faith and to renew ourselves as Christians. And as we think about the meaning of this gift, we might find that it points us in the right direction for a new year. So this passage from John's Gospel begins with this line. In the beginning. And right away, we sense something very familiar. It sounds an awful lot like the first sentence of the first line in the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1-1, which is this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Rings a bell. The first line in the first book of the Bible is where we see the unfolding of a creation story about our faith. The story begins by declaring that God already exists and that God is described as existing in a time before time. God exists when nothing else exists in Genesis. And then God decides to start the clock of history. Now the passage that Deacon Terry read from John's Gospel has a similar feel to it. We'll remember that it starts with that phrase, in the beginning. And this is something of a creation story, too. It's a portrayal of Jesus. And it's intended to set the tone for the entire gospel of John, the whole book. This passage that Deacon Terry read is called the prologue to John's gospel. It's a prologue that presents Jesus in a brand new way, not arriving as a baby in a manger. Rather, Jesus is portrayed as already existing. Very different. Jesus is described as the word, the word, already existing and with God. You know, the number of discussions and books and articles and blogs and sermons and commentaries written about this one passage makes my head spin. There are so many. And that, of course, should be a clue about its significance to the Christian story. It's a statement about the divinity of Jesus that is divinity in the flesh. And fundamentally, this message from this passage in John's Gospel, this prologue, and the rest of the writing invites us to think about the way God is involved in our lives. There we go. <laughs> it's an invitation. It's an invitation to consider how God is communicating with humanity. That's what it really is all about in the life and in the message of Jesus Christ. 
This gift is an invitation to wonder about the context and the people portrayed in scripture. This is a gift, it's an invitation to seriously learn and to feel deeply about the way God is revealed to all of us, to all of humanity. This passage from John's Gospel, this prologue, isn't intended to scare people. It's not intended to scare people into believing in God. It's not intended to give easy answers to complicated questions. What it does is it guides us along a path. It guides us along a path of understanding. It's the way of love. It supports us. This passage supports us as we step out into unknown territory of thinking and feeling. This gospel is unusual because it starts by talking about Jesus as the Word. <laughs> So the word, 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 here in this scripture, is derived from two Greek terms. And this is helpful to know. These are two Greek terms that are related to human reason. The feminine Greek term, Sophia, is reason. It's reason that is thinking seriously that is internal to a person. And the second term is a masculine term in Greek, logos. It's reason that is expressed through language. So John is calling Jesus the word, which involves these two terms, Sophia and logos. John is inviting us to a greater understanding of God and a greater understanding of ourselves by inviting us to think seriously about the way we reason and about the nature of divine communication. Oh, I know, this is deep water. <laughs> it is. It's deep water. But the message of this scripture passage is perfectly timed for New Year's Eve. It's the perfect one for starting a new year. Because right now, we can say with confidence that God is calling us to live in a new way, right? God is calling us to live differently. Starting tomorrow, New Year's Day, I hope that each one of us will accept God's invitation to explore the ideas of our faith and we will decide to renew ourselves as Christians. This is the start of a new year. And I look forward to the way that all of us will adjust our thinking, question our assumptions, relearn how to trust God. Relearn how to trust one another. In 2024, I believe that we can recommit ourselves to Christian fellowship and experiencing the transforming power of love. The altar call, if you all know what that is, the altar call, it's a tradition in some Christian churches, an altar call. It's a tradition in which those who wish to make a new spiritual commitment are invited to come forward to the altar at a particular time in the church service. I got your attention, didn't I? <laughs> I know that this term makes many people very, very, very 
nervous. Don't worry, it makes me nervous too. But I would like to suggest that this passage from John's Gospel, starting with the line, in the beginning was the word, that that passage is something of an altar call. John is inviting us to come forward, to steer clear of overconfidence, to avoid hypocrisy, to recognize that faith in a loving God is central to humanity. John is asking us to think seriously and to feel deeply. John is calling us to live enlightened lives. I pray that today we will begin this new year, 2024, with a new energy, with a sense of curiosity and a commitment to living our faith. We, we can be confident that God is actively revealing the divine to us every day. And we're called to respond in love. That's what we're supposed to do. So in that opening prayer that we all read together, we read these words. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Let us welcome a new year. Let us walk in a new light and embrace a new beginning. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able. And let us affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of, of one being, being with the Father. Father. Through, Through him all, all things were made. For us, for us and for our salvation, salvation he came down from heaven. By, By the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and, and was made man. man. For, our for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried. buried. On, On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Matthew, our assisting bishop, Esther, our priest, 
Terry, our deacon, Loretta, our pastoral assistant, and the St. Aidan's Community of Faith, grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we continue our Christmas celebration, as well as preparing for this new calendar year, I invite you to consider the many blessings that we find in our lives. Let us take a moment and name those blessings and giving thanks to God in our midst. Either aloud on our lips or silently in our hearts. Give thanks for Lorraine. I invite your prayers for the work, mission, and ministry of the Anglican Communion Worldwide, of which we are a part. Today, we lift up the people of Eglise Anglican de Rwanda. In our own diocese, let us lift up our friends who are at Trinity Parish in Wauwatosa. I ask your prayers for those who travel, for safe journeys for them, for either if they're traveling away from us or traveling to us that we may rejoice when we have opportunities to come together with friends, family, loved ones. I ask your prayers for healing for those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. We lift up Luke, Charlie, Diana, Liam, Pat and Ron, Angelica, Lena and her family, Pat, Fred and Pat, Steve, Chris, Barbara, Dan, Mary Ann, Pete, Jan and Mike, Bert, Elliot, Dave, Lois, Bob, Don, Sandy, Harold, Nancy. Are there others? I ask your prayers of thanksgiving and support for those who give of themselves who serve us as well as the greater community for those who are in our military, particularly for Sean, Ethan, and Juliana. We give thanks for those who serve as healthcare providers and for those who serve as first responders. I ask your prayers for this diocese and that we will be ordaining six, excuse me, five people to the diaconate this coming Saturday. Please pray for Louise, Lisa, Robert, Hunter, and Christopher. And may we all as a diocese be united in the spirit of bringing these leaders forth to serve amongst us. I also ask your prayers, particularly during this holiday season, for those who may be feeling alone or lonely for whom Christmas time may be more painful than more joyful. We pray for comfort and solace for them. And finally, I ask your prayers for those who have gone before us 
and then have entered into the near presence of Christ and been windows of Christ's love in our lives. I looked up Jean and Tom, Billy, Anna, Evelyn. Lord our God, accept mm. the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have, done, what we have left undone. We have, we have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We, we are, are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the, For the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy, mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. Peace, love. Dave, I'm behind you. Peace, right? Peace. Peace, y'all. Peace, Alex. Peace, Alex. Peace, Virginia. Hey, Andy. Peace. Hey, Jack. Peace be with you. That's all right. Peace. Peace. Peace, Kevin. Peace, Lynn. Peace. Peace out. Peace. Peace, y'all. Peace, I got to go for me. I'm eating lunch right now. Peace, Peace. Peace there. Peace. Peace. Peace, Virginia. Peace. Peace, y'all. Peace, Linda. Peace. Peace, Chris. Peace, Jack. Peace, Billy. Well, it is kind of a dreary day. Sometimes I like to say it's sunny when it's not, but it's <laughs> today is kind of a dreary day. Perhaps it'll break and we'll have some sunshine a little bit later. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> I know, exactly. Yep, the end of December in Wisconsin, so I guess that's just how it goes. We have one birthday to celebrate. Eric Wetzel, our junior warden, is celebrating his birthday this week. We don't have any anniversaries, but I'm guessing that around the Christmas time there are some. So let us pray for all of those celebrating a birthday as well as an anniversary. Um, oh, do we not have the prayers in here? Oh, I don't have them in here. All right. You know, um, actually, this is, this is a good pedagogical moment. <laughs> the prayers are in our Book of Common Prayer. And they are on page um, Prayers and Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, birthdays are in the back. Do, 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 do. I know, isn't this funny? 8.30. 8.30, thank By you. By luck out. Oh, you're so good. I, Keith and Terry, this is why we can You're great. Yep, 8.30. So let us pray together from page 8.30. Um, it's the second birthday prayer, um, number 50. Let us pray for Eric and everyone celebrating a birthday. Oh God, our times, our times are, are in your hand. hand. Look, Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Eric, and as he begins another year. year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace, and, grace and, and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 Blessings to everyone who's celebrating a birthday. The anniversary prayer we take from the marriage um, 
Do you know that page? Uh, I don't, but I can go look at it. <laughs> it's from the marriage ceremony. Um, see, this is really good, isn't it? Stump the clergy. Um, it's page 429, I believe, or 420 something. Oh, 431, there we go. Yep, 431. I knew I was getting close. 431, it is right at the top. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, oh God, you have you so, so consecrated, consecrated the covenant, covenant of marriage that, that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ, Christ and, and his church. church. Send, Send therefore, therefore your blessing upon these your servants, servants that, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, God now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Book of Common Prayer is our book of the Episcopal Church, so um, that should be a good friend of yours, uh, and it's, it's where our prayers are, are uh, coming from. Um, coffee hour, please stay for coffee hour. Linda, I think, has uh, prepared, and Alice has prepared a really nice coffee hour, so please, please stay with us for that. Um, the January Stag and Staff newsletter just went out electronically, um, and we didn't get it since our office was closed this week, we didn't get a chance to print it, but we'll have it next Sunday. So we'll have the paper copy if you don't wanna print that out. Um, but look for that, and you can look for it online too. Um, as you probably know, uh, we are uh, kind of in the first couple of weeks here of our pledge season, our annual pledge season. And uh, you probably received a mailing uh, from the church with some letters and pictures and a pledge card. Um, please give that some prayer and um, um, give that some prayer. Uh, we have some uh, things that we will talk about at our annual meeting. Uh, and I invite you to put that on your calendar. Um, the annual meeting for this parish is always a really wonderful event where we gather basically to talk about the business of the church. I know it's not very exciting, but it is an opportunity to, to hear how things are going and, and receive reports on, on how things are, um, how we do things uh, organizationally and as a spiritual community. Um, so please mark uh, January 21st on your calendar. That's also um, in the e-news and in the study staff, but um, please make a mental note. January 21st, um, parish annual meeting. Any, uh, Ron, I think you've got an announcement. Yeah. Yes, we had a very good success in the uh, Senate bill. The Harvest Moon and Mike Epley, Reverend Bennett, who is in good reality teaching the Bishop's program, the Bishop's board to have an outreach program to encourage his involvement. So, thank you, Ron. Absolutely, and thank you for doing that, Ron. Yeah. Ron and Judy Pierce are faithful, faithful attendees and helpers at the community lunch um, every single month at the United Methodist Church. Thank you for doing that. Esther? Walk in love, yes. I do have you something. You can carry. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, I do remember that. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, please. Oh, uh, there's a movie that you all, I certainly am interested in attending. It's called A Case for Love. It's, uh, I saw this uh, in the diocesan e-news that just came out last week. Uh, so I wanna try to pique your interest and we can talk about maybe attending together. A Case for Love, make plans to see A Case for Love, a film inspired by the teachings and writings of presiding Bishop Michael Curry. The documentary will be shown in a thousand theaters nationwide on one day only. Two, it says Tuesday, January 23rd, but that's actually a January 23rd to Thursday. We'll get details on that. <laughs> oh, oh, 2024. Many theaters throughout uh, Wisconsin will be showing the film. You can buy advanced tickets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyhow, uh, let me check more into that. However, I would love to see if we can indeed get people interested in attending together. There are two showings. The closest theater, actually, there's, it's going to be showing a bunch of Marcus theaters, and the closest one that I saw is in Menominee Falls. Uh, but I believe it's Thursday, the 23rd. There are two showings, one at 4 p.m. and one at 7 p.m. So we can talk about this offline, if you will, but I'd like to gather a bunch of interest and see who might be interested, in, and we can gather together and maybe have some, uh, some food in somewhere in Tulsa and without that too. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind, more details coming. Yeah, and the movie involves people that you would know. 
uh, Episcopalians that you would know from uh, TV, movies, yeah. um, public life. Al Roker, um, Sam Watterson, lots of lots of people that, that you would recognize. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is number 112 in the bleak midwinter, how appropriate. But please consider the last verse as your personal offering. Rise. Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift, lift them, them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you creator of heaven and earth because you sent your beloved son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs to him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Oh! 
Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. You love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the joyful, sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purposes, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, restored death and made the whole creation new. And then we, that we might live, no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And at supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And now we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given to us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise, praise you, you. We, we bless you. you. We, we give, give thanks, thanks to you. And, and we, we pray, pray to you, Lord our God. God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your holy Catholic Church and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Saint Aidan and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ, in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray the words Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Mercy on us, Lamb of God, you 
gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Why did you forget? Thank you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of, okay, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. salvation. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Pat.
us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, the worship of the wise men, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And may the God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Our ending song <laughs> is our starting song, <laughs> Joy to the World, number 100. Let us go in hope, joy, and peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 Thank you.